Good evening and welcome to 8 o'clock live, your current affairs program here on Bob TV, which comes live at 8. Well, you couldn't agree with me more if I could say that everybody now in the world knows what is HIV. And of course, they know what causes it. But debates have actually been raised at the conference which was held in Devon over the past few days. Many scientists came together to brainstorm and of course to end up having a solution towards finding the cure of this pandemic. Meantime, before we go any further, we have the audience which is going to participate on our program. Everybody, welcome to 8 o'clock live. So, what we are going to do now is to look at an insert which has been compiled by our producer, Vuisile Ngesi. Let's take a look. Scientists, representatives of NGOs, over 1,500 journalists and support groups converged recently at the Durban International Convention Center to bring heads together and share knowledge about the epidemic which has continued to ravage the world's population even today. The conference hadn't long begun when the audience was informed that the government's role in the fight against the pandemic is minimal. High Court Judge Edwin Cameron accused the government of mismanaging the pandemic. My own country, a government that in its commitment to human rights and democracy has been a shining example to Africa and the world, has at almost every conceivable turn mismanaged this epidemic. As President Tabombeke looks for an African solution to the virus ravaging the continent, Uganda has emerged as one of the world's success stories in fighting this cage. The secret of its success has more to do with fidelity and celibacy. Meanwhile, the disease is killing more people in South Africa than any other health risk. It emerged at the conference that pharmaceutical companies were offering the antiretroviral drug, nevrapine, to age patients free of charge. This came subsequent to prove that the drug can reduce the infection rate from mother to child by half. The government rejected the offer. National Health Minister Mando Shabalala Msimang said she's not sure if the drug is safe to use until a scientific report proves otherwise. Scientists became outraged when President Mbeki raised the issue of causal relationship between HIV and AIDS. AIDS was first diagnosed in the early 80s when Professor Luc Montagnier and his counterparts isolated the HIV virus from AIDS. We know a lot on the virus. We know a little less about how the virus causes the disease, which is a complex phenomenon. There are many interactions between the, the host, you know, the person who is infected, uh, its immune system, and the virus. And how the immune system is uh, completely uh, knocked out by the virus is not very clear, but Still, we know that the virus is at the origin of this uh, very profound immune depression we call AIDS. And due to this uh, decline of the immune system, unfortunately, many people get infections, cancer, and they die. Scientists around the world have launched different vaccines such as Virogen P058, HART, AZT, and Fugonozale, to mention but a few. The argument is that all these drugs reduce the level of infection in the immune system and side effects are not clearly defined to tell how would the AIDS patients be affected. A lot of research is going on, on vaccine, on the origin of the virus, on how the virus is influenced by different kinds of pharmaceuticals that can help us, you know, push it down or hopefully uh, a curable, uh, to, to become a curable disease, which it isn't now. There is nothing that brings it out when it is already in the blood of a person. The conference ended two days ago and the next one will be held in Barcelona in two years time. After all the deliberations, exchange of ideas and knowledge on AIDS, the vaccine is still yet to be found seven years from now. 
What happens in the interim is that people, irrespective of age, race, sex and color, continue to die. The question is, what have the delegates from the conference gained so far? Well, the worst over artist of that inset is Solim Mahalefa, and it was compiled by Voice Sile Guessing program. We said that scientists, people from different professions, members of the community, NGOs, and so on, gathered at the Deben International Conference to share ideas as to how can AIDS be combated against. Now, David Belulu, you claim that you can cure AIDS. Why didn't you attend the conference? Because you have an idea. <coughs> Uh, actually, I've got a cure. I came up with a cure about uh, was it 10 years ago. Uh, I leave a message to the public like I've got a cure six years ago. And I begin to cure people from 1994. But why, I, why didn't you attend the conference? Ah, it's not my job. <coughs> my job is to find a cure. Uh, this gentleman, David, is a special person. And he came at the time when we need him most, the time that everybody is dying of HIV AIDS, and he really came with a cure. I know a number of people who are suffering from AIDS, and they are really interested in coming to see him. Since there was a gentleman who was brave enough as to stand up and say, I was HIV positive, and then he cured me. And I also had a, a heart problem. The medical term is angina rhinitis. That means a blocked muscle in the heart. And the doctors suggested a number of times that I undergo an, a heart operation, but I was not of the idea of having a heart operation. And then I immediately came to him and uh, he cured me with just the first treatment. For as little as 300 rand, he chewed me, and now my health is back to normal. I strongly think that this gentleman is a godsend. He came in the hour that the whole world needs uh, a medication for AIDS. So we must really be thankful to him, and the government should be kind enough as to help him, because Amongst our AIDS patients, there are those who live below the bread line, those who cannot even afford the expensive medication. I'm really thankful. I'm grateful to him. Are, are there people that you know who are suffering from AIDS for whom this gentleman has cured? Yes, definitely. And I'm not, a, I, I, I'm not ashamed to name one who is a friend of mine. The name is Theo Khekwane, a young guy who nearly lost his life, a young guy who had his whole life ahead of him, but because of the AIDS problem, we nearly lost him. But today he's back on his feet. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Vika. Mm. David, <laughs> Government <laughs> Yeah, 
Can you tell us what happened to you? How were you feeling before you you had the medication? Okay. I felt tired. That was the first thing, and um, I had sores. Um, and I didn't have any appetite. I couldn't eat. And uh, up until I met David. Did you go to the hospital about your problem? Yeah, I used to go to the hospital. And what did they tell you? Um, they just tested me. After testing me, they told me I should go for counseling. And I went for counseling in uh, Mafikeng. They used to place, I don't remember, Lifeline. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the person who was counseling me was Dolly. Yeah. And then that was it. Counseling you for what? For HIV. Like I should accept that I'm HIV positive and uh, I should learn to live with it. That was it. Then. Um, I met David, then David just gave me four bottles, uh, four liters, or I mean to say two liters, two, two liters, which is four liters. Then I just drank that milk. Then I made my test again, then I was negative. And I repeated the test, and repeated the test again. It, that was my third test now. So I'm negative again. When was the last time you made your, your test, your third test? Mm, the third test I made it on the day before my birthday, it was on the 16th. Which one? February. Okay. So how do you feel now? I'm super. Mm, I'm super. I had the appetite. Mm. I'm fine. You play I'm soccer. Fine. I'm playing soccer. I'm so I'm fine. It's just that people don't believe, but uh, all in all, what I can say is that I think he, he has got the right medicine, and therefore people should know. And maybe if he can be allowed to help people, he can do so. What do you think should be done for him to, to help him? Uh, that is why I, 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 I took pains to come in front of the camera and tell uh, the people that I am cured and it's because of David. People should know, they should advertise him, they should take his medication and help people because people are dying out there. What was the, the reaction of your parents after they said that uh, you were Well, my, no, it was just the normal because uh, they gave me all the support that I needed. My mom is a nurse, she always took care of me and my family gave me the whole support that I needed. Even my co-workers, they gave me the whole support that I needed. I never had any complaints. They were supporting me very much. What are they saying now as far as the result of you being negative? Uh, what are the reaction of all their parents in the society at large? Do they believe? They, 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 they don't believe uh, as such because uh, some of the people I didn't even who want to argue with them or do whatever. I just told them that there is someone out there who can help them, who is David. And so some of the people, when you tell them, they believe that the HIV cannot be cured. And that today I'm saying it, uh, it's impossible, it can be cured. And there's only one person that I know, it's David and Trump. Mm. And uh, for the medication, he didn't even charge me a cent. Because I went to him, I had money. I had something like 3,000 in my pocket. And I showed him, I told him that I want to be cured. And he just told me that uh, he'll give me the medication that will help me. When I said I'm paying, he said, no, I shouldn't pay you. Uh, I must just drink the medication and wait for about a month and go and do my test. Then uh, everything was super. I just told him that I'm negative again. He just smiled, you know, and I, I, I mean, I couldn't believe it also. I thought maybe for the first time they made a mistake. Mm. 
Maybe it was the other mistake. I, I was not positive before. Because now I'm negative. How many times were you tested positive? Uh, I was tested, no, I was tested twice positive. Firstly, I tried to donate blood, that's why they told me that I was positive. They didn't say clearly that I was positive, they just said there are some irregularities in my blood and uh, I should go for a test. I just went for the test. And the second time? And then for the second time now... Why did you go for the for second time? For the second time is that I, I was afraid and I, I suspected maybe this might be uh, HIV or whatever the sickness that I have. Because uh, when you have some of the diseases, I believe you cannot donate blood, like a heart attack, mm -hmm. kidney problems. Yeah. So I thought maybe it's one of those problems. So I just wanted to know and to understand uh, what is going on with me only to find that the blood test says I'm positive. Then I went to David, then he helped me. Here I am today. And I hope to live for the next come 20 or 30 years. <laughs> yeah, could you briefly tell us about your, your condition before you went to David and now? Just tell us what happened to you and what is happening to you now? Okay, I was I was diagnosed uh, sugar diabetic uh, in 1991, uh, and from that uh, it was 1991, and from that year up until 1998, I was I was on tablets uh, for sugar diabetic. Uh, I took the uh, the treatment for that entire period until I met uh, David in 1998 December. Yeah, uh, David uh, prescribed uh, med a medicine for me, to which uh, uh, he told me it will help me to cure this sugar problem that I have. Uh, I had, in fact, I had because now I feel uh, I feel much much better. So from 1998 December up until now, uh, my health has been restored. I feel much much better. I don't feel any pain of any sort uh, caused by this sugar sugar and so, uh, sugar disease and so on. Uh, I would like to stress that uh, before I went to David, that is the same de uh, month of December, I could not walk properly because my the bottom of my uh, left foot was al already affected by this sugar. I could not walk properly. I was in pain continuously. So uh, after I met David and approximately for about, uh, I took the medicine that he gave me for about two months and my, 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 I was cured. I could now walk properly, no pains whatsoever until now. Uh, no, uh, yeah, it's a once-off uh, uh, prescription. You take it and you finish it, and you wait for results. So I've com uh, I've taken it and uh, uh, I've stopped. Okay, yeah. The virus is still to be found. Seven years to come. In the meantime, whilst we are waiting, people continue to die. But as members of the community, I think it is imperative upon us to give them the support and the love that they need. That's the edition of 8 o'clock live here on Bob TV. From myself, Colin Lemoana, I would like to thank those who have called in. Members of the audience, you have been a wonderful audience. Give yourself a final round of applause. <laughs> and thank you very much to Dr. Mulesi Sifularo, as well as uh, Tabiso Terema, SABC journalist, and Ben Zulu. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Catch us next week. Don't miss 8 o'clock live next week because we are going to talk yet about another developmental issue which is very controversial. So don't miss 8 o'clock live. Good night. We love you all. Cheers.